Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High Christ Bless. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Josiah to my right. Officer Abraham. So today's topic is going to be Pentecost. Pentecost, which is one of the holy feasts of the Most High. So let's begin with the uh, Zonovan and get the definition there. The Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 446. Pentecost. The word derives from the Greek for the 50th day which fell on the 50th day after the Feast of the Passover. Read that first part again. The word derives from the Greek for the 50th day. So it derives from the Greek, meaning the 50th day. When you look up Penta, it's, it represents five. Penta represents five. Pentecost going into the 50th day. Read it one more time. The word derives from the Greek for the 50th day, mm -hmm. which fell on the 50th day after the Feast of the Passover. Okay, that's it? Yeah. Okay, now, Leviticus 23. Now, it says the 50th day after Passover. That was kind of generic. It's not exactly 50 days. but It, it is, but there's a key to it. And um, Leviticus 23 and 15. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. From the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. That's the key right there. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So you can't just start counting right after Passover and start 50 days. It has to be seven Sabbaths. So let's say Passover is on a Monday like it was this year, right? Mm -hmm. You're already, the week has already started. Right. So you got to start counting the next week to get seven full Sabbaths, for example. Read that part again. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, uh -huh. from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. That means 49 days. Read on. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. So after the 49th day, come on. Ye shall number 50 days uh -huh. and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. So now jump up to verse four. Verse four. These are the feasts of the Lord, mm -hmm. even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In their seasons. So Pentecost is a seasonal feast day. All right. Give me Exodus. Pentecost is a seasonal feast day. Exodus chapter 23. And we're going to read verse 16. Exodus chapter 23, verse 16. And the feast of harvest, the feast, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and in the feast of ingathering. Which so stop right there. We only want that first part because the feast of ingathering is going, goes to another feast day. But read that first part again. And the feast of harvest, uh -huh. the first fruits of thy labors. So now the key is it says the feast of harvest. This is another term for Pentecost. It's called a feast of harvest. All right. Read it again. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors. And that's the key. Okay. Because Pentecost was bringing in our first fruits. Okay. Read on. That's it. Which thou hast sown in the field. Okay. So now give me Esther chapter eight real quick. Um, Esther chapter eight, verse nine. Now, 
Pentecost takes place during the third month of the year. Okay, the third month of the year. Now, this isn't going into Pentecost in particular, but I'm just showing you the third month and that name that they gave in the Bible. Okay, come on. It's the book of Esther, chapter 8, verse 9. Then were the king's scribes called at that time, in the third month, that is, the month Sivan. In the third month, that is Sivan. So this is a post-exilic name that the Bible gives of the month during Pentecost. Okay, now. Uh, Exodus 34. Let's go to Exodus chapter 34 and verse 22. Let's get another term and dig a little bit more into it. It's the book of Exodus chapter 34, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks. The what? The feast of weeks. Come on. Of the first fruits of wheat mm -hmm. harvest and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. So that was another feast, but we want the first part again. Read the first part. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks. So this is another term. So we have Pentecost, we have the feast of harvest, and we have the feast of weeks. Read on. Of the first fruits of wheat harvest. Okay, so now we have another term for Pentecost, feast of weeks as well. How many weeks? Seven weeks. And then you count the next day, which is the 50th day. Now, this particular feast would always fall on what's called a Sunday or beginning Saturday night into Sunday at sundown. Okay. From there, give me uh, Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy 16, verse 9, I believe. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 9. Come on. Seven weeks shalt thou number unto thee. Mm -hmm. Begin to number the seven weeks. From such a time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. Come on. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of a freewill offering mm -hmm. of thine hand. Come on. Which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. So we brought offerings during the feast, okay, as we did with the other ones as well. Come on. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. thou and thy son and thy daughter. And thy manservant and thy maidservant. So this feast is made for us to rejoice in. It says who? Who's supposed to attend? Thy son uh -huh. and thy daughter uh -huh. and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gates and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there. So what does that mean? This is a holy convocation, a holy gathering that the most I set up. Okay. Now, give me Toba chapter 2. Toba chapter 2, and um, let's get verse 1. Book of Toba chapter 2, verse 1. Now, when I was come home again, and my wife Anna was restored unto me mm -hmm. with my son Tobias in the feast of Pentecost, mm -hmm. which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. That's a precept proving that it's talking about the same thing. Pentecost which is the feast of the seven weeks. Come on. There was a good dinner. A what? A good dinner mm -hmm. prepared me. So now, like I said, it's a feast. The Most High said in Leviticus 23 and 4, these are my feasts that you shall proclaim in their seasons. We prepare dinner. And we read in, uh, what was it, Exodus, mm -hmm. you know, your son, your wife, your daughter, the maid servants, whoever, come together and feast before the Most High. Read it again, two and one. Now, when I was come home again, my wife Anna has was restored unto me uh -huh. with my son Tobias in the feast of Pentecost, which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. So now let's jump back to chapter one real quick and look at verse two. Chapter one, verse two. Who in the time of Emineser, king of the Assyrians, was laid captive out of Thesbian, which is at the right hand of that city which is called properly Naphtali of Ga in Galilee above Assur. Read on. I, Tobit, have walked all the days of my life in read, the... Read two again, one more time. Verse two. Who in the time of Enemaneser, king of the Assyrians... Now, Enemaneser is Shalmaneser, same person. Read on. ...was led captive out of Thesbi, which is at the right hand of that city. So now, this is talking about Tobit in the time of the Assyrian captivity... We read in chapter 2, he kept the Feast of Pentecost. Now, you read in the law, in Leviticus, Exodus, and so forth, you had to go to Jerusalem to keep the feast. We read Tobit right here in captivity, keeping the Feast of Pentecost while in Assyria. Mm -hmm. Right? So we right. can keep the feast in our captivity. Read uh, 2 and 1 again. 2 and 1. 
Now when I was come home again, and my wife Anna was restored unto me, mm -hmm. with my son Tobias in the Feast of Pentecost, which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. Right. During the Assyrian captivity, the prophet Tobit kept the feast. Okay. Now give me second Maccabees real quick. Um, let's further go into that. Second Maccabees chapter 12. Okay. Let's see what our forefathers did during the Greek captivity. Okay. Second Maccabees chapter 12, verse 31 and 32. Second Maccabees chapter 12, verse 31. They gave them thanks, desiring them to be friendly still unto them. Mm -hmm. And so they came to Jerusalem, the feast of the weeks approaching. So now, during the Greek captivity, they went to Jerusalem. But we read Toba, he kept it in Assyria. Read it again. They gave them thanks, desiring them to be friendly still unto them. Mm -hmm. And so they came to Jerusalem, the feast of weeks approaching. Uh -huh. And after the feast called Pentecost... Mm -hmm. They went forth against Gorgias, the governor of Idumea. So these are more scriptures proven. Feast of Weeks is same same thing, Pentecost. But during the Greek captivity, our forefathers still kept the feast. Okay? From there, give me um, Numbers chapter 28. Numbers chapter 28, verse 26. All right? <clears throat> Numbers chapter 28, verse 26. Go ahead. Also in the day of the first fruits, when ye bring a new meat offering unto the Lord, after your weeks be out. First fruit, same thing. Pentecost. Come on. Ye shall have an holy convocation. Same thing we read earlier, where a good dinner is prepared. Read on. Ye shall do no servile work. So that key means it is a Sabbath. You are to keep this day as a Sabbath. No servile work. Okay, so if you can get the day off, make sure you get the day off and keep the feast of the Most High. Read one more time. Also in the day of the first fruits, when ye bring a new meat offering unto the Lord, mm -hmm. after your weeks be out, Ye, sh ye shall have in holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. Okay, so we read about our forefathers keeping the feast. We read about how it was set up in the Old Testament under, the, under Moses. Let's go to, uh, let's get to the New Testament, Acts chapter 1. Let's see if our forefathers kept it after Christ died. Because, you know, in the Christian world, they're going to tell us that, oh, we don't have to do that stuff no more, right? Mm -hmm. So let's delve into that. Acts chapter 1. Let's read. Before we get that, get Colossians. Let's get Colossians first. Colossians chapter 2. And read verse 14. Okay. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Watch this. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, mm -hmm. which was contrary to us. And took it out of the way, mm -hmm. nailing it to the, his cross. So now, this is talking about Christ. It says he did what? Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, uh -huh. which was contrary to us. So these things that he blotted out was against us. It was contrary to us. Come on. And took it out of the way. He took these things out of the way. Nailing it to his cross. And he nailed it to his cross. Now let's see if it's talking about the feast days. Jump to Acts chapter 1. Read verse 9. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Mm -hmm. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, mm -hmm. which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So it says the same way he was taken up, he's going to return also. But the point I wanted is, we know by this time Christ had been crucified, he died, he rose again, and he had ascended up to heaven, right? Now, jump to Acts chapter 2, okay, verse 1. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and when the what? Day of Pentecost was fully come. Notice the key word, the day of Pentecost. It's one day. So it's not a religion. Mm. So Pentecostal is not in the Bible. Right. Read it one more time. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, uh -huh. they were all with one accord in one place. So now, meaning what? They came as a holy convocation to prepare dinner and to enjoy the Most High's feast day. Okay, read it one more time. 
And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. I want y'all to meditate on that word. The day of Pentecost. Now we read about weeks and weeks and weeks. Feast of weeks. But you just counted the weeks to get to that one particular day. That's all it is. So you can't, you can't take this day and create a whole religion out of it. It can't be done. That's not in the Bible. Okay, we got to go thus saith the Lord. So now, jump to Acts chapter 20. Okay, so again, we're reading Acts chapter 2. Christ had been uh, crucified. He died. He rose. He was already ascended. And they came in the next chapter to keep the feast day. Okay, so that was not talking about something he nailed to the cross. He did not nail keeping the Most High's feast days to the cross. He nailed the sacrificial law, okay, the, the blood blood of bulls, goats, animals, and so forth. That's what he nailed to the cross. But they still came to keep the feast. Let's read about Paul. Acts chapter 20, verse 16. Uh -huh. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus mm -hmm. because he would not spend the time in Asia. Uh -huh. For he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. The what? Day of Pentecost. So Paul was determined to keep the day of Pentecost. Okay. Was not Christ, I mean, did not Christ teach Paul? Mm -hmm. Right. He taught him. Everybody knows that history when he was kicked off the uh, horse, donkey, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Christ taught him and he kept the feast well after, okay, Christ was gone. Read it one more time. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia. Mm -hmm. For he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Right. So now we read about our forefathers during the time of Assyria keeping the feast. We read about our forefathers during the time of the Greeks keeping the feast. We're reading about our forefathers during the time of Rome right here, determined to keep the feast. Now, here we are in America, Babylon the Great. Mm -hmm. We have to be determined to keep the feast as well. So come together as a holy convocation, prepare dinner, food, feast, have music, enjoy each other, and enjoy the Most High's laws. All right? So with that, we say shalom. Shalom. Sacrifice bless. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.